What are some of the fears and insecurities new immigrants face when coming to the US? Hi, my name is Ambar and I'm a chartered accountant working as a banker in New York City. I'm originally from India and I've been calling the US home for the last 13 years. I started this channel to share my life, travel and work experiences. So if you like the content, please consider subscribing. The US is one of the most favored destinations for immigration globally. With a 15% immigrant population, the country is often termed as land of immigrants. While the appeal of a better quality of life draws many, moving to a new country can be intimidating and full of insecurities. In this video, I will list down the top 10 insecurities new immigrants, especially Indian immigrants face when moving to the US. Insecurity number one, fear of social integration. This is one fear which many Indian immigrants face, especially given the cultural differences between India and the US. The glorification of Westerners in India and the lack of cross-cultural awareness and inferiority complex stemming from a comparison of a third world country like India to the US plays a large part of interpretation of the Western culture. Now times have changed immensely, but some fear of social integration still remains. Not knowing anyone in a new country can be intimidating. However, this fear is mostly temporary. With time, you start to assimilate yourself with the environment and come to realize that everywhere around the world, people are generally accepting and friendly. Secondly, unless you are in a very remote part of the country with no Indians around, you will find your social group almost in all organizations and major cities, and that builds up your confidence and removes social anxiety fast. Insecurity number two, loneliness. Now, this is just an extension of the social integration fear. New immigrants can experience feeling of loneliness when they first arrive in a new country. Adjusting to a new culture, language, and social environment can be both challenging and isolating. This particularly applies to people who are based in rural towns or single people. There are several strategies that you can use to elevate your loneliness, such as connecting and actively participating in communal events, engaging in social activities, and seeking online forums and community websites to connect with others who share common interests and background. Fear number three is fear of losing visa status. Now, For this video, I interviewed 40 of my immigrant friends and co-workers. This was one of the biggest fears which came to everyone's mind on first thought. There's a real fear about losing your visa status. Why? Because your livelihood and existence in this country depends on it. People move here for a better life. Students move here looking for a better prospect. A loss of that status means that you would have to give up on those dreams. Many people I know had bought properties in the US, but due to visa complications had to move back or move to other countries and start afresh. People who have built up lives here have a lot to lose if they lose status. And given the long wait time in getting green card for Indians, this insecurity is something you have to live in for decades. Insecurity number four is visa restrictions. Depending on the kind of visa you are on, there can be legal restrictions. If you are on L1 visa, you cannot change employers and that means you are stuck with them till you get your green card, which can be upwards of 15 to 20 years. The H1B visa allows job portability, but most companies show hesitation in sponsoring it given the legal hassles of visa transfer, renewal every three years, and providing support in the long-term green card process. Further, if you are laid off, you only have 60 days to find another job. But there is no way around this fear. If you are on a visa, you have to live with the restrictions till you get your EAD or employment authorization, which gives you the same rights as a US citizen to work. This could take upwards of 10 to 15 years, barring special cases like the L1A visa, where you can get the status relatively quickly. Fear number five is credential recognition. Immigrants with professional degrees or qualifications obtained in their home countries may face difficulties in having credentials recognized in the US. This is mostly valid for people who have moved here on a work permit. For instance, when I first moved here in 2011, barring my employer, no one understood what an Indian chartered accountant was. When I was changing jobs, I got my degrees evaluated to the US equivalent, which made it much easier for companies to hire me. Fear number six is spousal visa restriction. For a previously working spouse who has moved to the US to be with their partner, there can be a significant wait period, often a few years, till they are cleared to work in the US. Even with the restriction removed, in most occasions, their work status is dependent on the status of the primary visa holder or their partner. So if the primary visa holder loses job, the spouse is also at the risk of losing their job. Over the course of the years, the spousal visa restriction have relaxed a bit, but this is still a very valid restriction that people have to be aware of. Fear number seven is fear of discrimination. In recent times, you must have seen incidences like these that highlight the vulnerability of Indians when it comes to racism. So how valid are these fears? First, incidents like these are rare a bit. I have lived here for more than 13 years and know of people who have lived here their entire life 
and they all agree that racism to the extent shown in these videos are a bit rare. Also, the perception of immigrants depends on the part of the country you are based in. I live and work in New York City. This is one of the largest and most diverse cities in the US. This is also a majorly liberal city, meaning it is very welcoming and safe for immigrants. The same goes for any major cosmopolitan city in the US. However, if you do end up working and living in a remote part of the country where there is no diversity, you may find people staring at you or giving you some looks that does not necessarily translate into racism but may make you feel alone. The good part is most jobs exist in large metropolitan cities and people are way more adapted to international exposure in global companies. However, if you are a victim of racism, there are very strict laws in effect that protect you and your family. Fear number eight is gun violence. Second Amendment on the right to bear arms is one of America's most debated topics of all time. America has the most liberal gun laws in the entire world. New immigrants who come from countries like India, where gun violence is relatively rare, may have heightened concerns about their family's safety, especially in gun-loving states like Texas and Florida. So how valid are these fears? For this, let's look at some stats. So every year, 115,000 people are victims of gun violence. Of these, roughly 34% or 39,000 incidents are fatal, meaning somebody dies. Of the 39,000, 23,000 are suicide victims and 14,000 are actually murdered with intent. This 14,000 includes the school shootouts and mass shootings we hear about regularly. So the statistics in question is 14,000 or roughly 11% of all gun violence. If you take into account the US population of 340 million, that's less than 0.004%, which means one in every 24,000 people are prone to die by gun violence. I personally don't believe immigrants should constantly fear gun violence because the chances of you being directly involved in such incidents are relatively rare. Although the US does face challenges in gun violence and tragic incidents do occur, they are not representative of the daily experiences of most individuals living in the US. Insecurity number nine is high cost of living. The cost of living in the US can be significantly higher than in many other countries. If you live in a large metropolitan city like New York City or the Bay Area, the cost of accommodation alone can be significantly high compared to rural areas of the US. For example, I rent a two-bedroom apartment in New York City and my rent is upwards of $4,000 per month. This is astronomical by any means. But if I plan to buy the same apartment, I will be looking at anywhere between $1 to $1.3 million, which again is super high. Now, however, not everywhere in the country is like this. If you step away 30 miles or 50 kilometers from the city, the house prices and rents cut in half. Now, insecurity number 10 is lifestyle change. And this one I kept at the last, as there seemed to be a conflict from many who like the lifestyle, like myself, and many who don't. Now, unlike India, there is no help available in the US, which can be a deal breaker for many. I'll give you an example. When I moved to the US in 2011, there was another guy here from India in a similar profile. Now, I had an active and independent lifestyle in India, being raised in a lower middle class family. I grew up doing all my chores by myself. So adjusting to this lifestyle was never an issue. My friend, on the other hand, grew up in opulence, never visited the kitchen in his life, and had a full-time staff with him back in India to take care of his chores. Needless to say, he did not last beyond a couple of months here. He hated his stay even for those months. So that's it. These are the top 10 insecurities immigrants face when moving to the US. Now, stemming from my own experience, the life of an immigrant can be hard and filled with insecurities. However, the country more than compensates for it by providing you the life you have been dreaming for yourself and your family, provided you are ready to work for it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more immigration, money, and life-based content. Till next time, be safe and take care.